Good morning, everybody. Welcome you to this class. So we will be having this class on antifungal antibiotics. I decided to make this audio so that uh, you could reduce your data and you can go over it's on and on. So, antifungal antibiotics. Why antifungal drugs? You all know about antibiotics, antivirus, and antifungal. So, why do we need antifungal drugs? And if fungal drug is used to take care of infection that, are, that arises due to fungal infection. Normally, we don't have much fungal infection most of the time. But one thing or the other usually lead to increase or incidence of fungal infection. To this purpose, there must be a remedy for fungal treatment, I mean, fungal infection. That is why we need antifungal drugs. We can use antiviral drugs to take care of fungal infection, and we can use antibiotics to take care of fungal infection. Definitely, we're going to be needing antifungal drugs to take care of antibiot, I mean, fungal infection. So why do fungal infection occur? Normally, when there is abuse of broad spectrum antibiotics, this leads to imbalance in the system. When we say imbalance, there are some organisms that are protecting the system. When I say system, the body, now, these organisms can be, uh, the community can be disturbed whereby those who are serving as protective organism dies and those who are anti, I mean, those who are acting like infectious will increase. Now, when this happens, your body suffers infection due to other organisms. These other organisms, some of them can be fungal organisms. And their presence in the body will lead to infection. Sometimes the protective flora can reduce drastically this opportunity is usually for other invas invasive organisms like invasion of pathogenic organism fungal infection viral infection and bacterial infection so they usually result to invasion of the system because of the activity of broad spectrum antibiotics. Also, decrease in patient immunity can also lead to fungal infection. When the patient immunity is compromised, individuals are often exposed to different kinds of infections which is also um, a, a leading causes of fungal and bacterial infection, including viral infection. Infection caused by fungi are often treated with the use of anti drugs. So decrease in patient immunity, such people that have diabetics, HIV, those who are uh, exposed to serious 
infection that have lead to, you know, loss of major antibodies or white blood cells, they have low immunity. They have been in compromise. I mean, I mean, their system have been compromised and such, they are exposed to different kinds of bacterial infections. And then fungal infection also sets in. So in all these cases, since we are looking at fungal infection, our treatment will be based on the use of antifungal drugs. So antifungal drugs are needed for three chief purposes. To control or eradicate fungal infection, such as those caused by surface or deep-seated infection. When we say surface or deep-seated infection, fungal infection, mostly they are superficial infection. That is infection that occurs at the surface level, at the skin level. A common example is ringworm. It's a surface infection. They call it surface infection. Then deep-seated infection are those that are more systemic those that go deeper into the system, not at the skin level. We also need antifungal drugs to control fungal infection, notably those caused by candida ambicus, which frequently follow extensive use of antibiotics. Candida usually lead to infection probably at the mouth, at the vagina, or other part of the system. So we need antifungal drugs to control such infection because candida is one of the disease-causing fungus. We also need it to control plant diseases. There are some plant infection that are not sensitive to antibiotics. The discovery of antibiotics highly effective against human and animal diseases of bacterial origin has raised hope of finding similar agents against fungal infection that are associated with plants. There are so many fungal infection that are disastrous to plants and um, you can't use antibiotics on them like we said so since they are caused by a particular fungus then we need to control it so as to prevent loss of plants for food so what are the sources of antifungal drugs Majorly, antifungal drugs are produced by several group of organisms. But the majority comes from actinomycetes, which offer the greatest promise. Actinomycetes produces several antifungal compounds. We have some modes, some fungus itself producing antifungal, antifungal uh, drugs or antifungal metabolites. But majorly, acnomycetes offer the greatest promise from the chemotherapeutic point of view. And it is known that more than half of all the cultures of acnomycetes isolated from the soil possess antifungal properties. So antifungal are uh, the major bacteria group that produces antifungal drugs that are now being manufactured into household drugs and clinical uses. What are the types of fungal infection? Like I said earlier, we have superficial fungal infection. Superficial fungal infection, those are the fungal infection that affect only the skin. The skin Example is tinea vesicolor. Fungal in this category, we have dermatophytes, the fungi that affect the keratin layer of the skin. 
air and nail, such as ringworm infections. Some people normally have air infections that are caused by fungi, resulting to whitish or loss of air, or ringworm that can be at the skin level. We call it superficial because it's at the surface level which you can physically see like that. We also have those that are caused by candida. Most infection caused by candida are called candidiasis. Candidiasis can lead to oral thrush. It can lead to nail infection. It can, it can lead to vulvo vaginitis. That is usually at the vagina. And this is caused by candida albicans. This constitutes the superficial infection caused by fungi. We have the deep seated infection. Deep seated infection consists of internal organs that are affected by fungi. Example, we have the lungs, we have the arts, brain. Fungi can also cause endocarditis. They can also cause meningitis. All these type of infections are at the systemic level. They are the systemic level. We don't call them superficial because these are not infections that we can see physically with our eyes. We can't see unless it is being diagnosed. A diagnosis will lead to uh, revelation of this causal agent. And it's usually at the internal part or internal organs, unlike the superficial that we can see at the skin level. So these are the two types of infection that are majorly known that are caused by fungi. Now, the classification of antifungal drugs, they are also classified based on how they work and their sources. The first is antifungal drug itself. Now we can call them antifungal antibiotics. When we say antifungal antibiotics, the word antibiotics here is qualifying antifungal as a drug that can kill other fungi. It is not a typical antibiotic produced by bacteria to kill bacteria. But because we have most of them produced by bacteria, so we can call them antifungal antibiotics, meant to kill fungi. I hope that is clear. Because any substances that are produced by bacteria and can kill other organisms is called antibiotics. Now, these antifungal drugs specifically act against fungus, even though it is produced by a bacteria. They are not having action against most bacteria. Their action is exerted against fungus. So we also have the synthetic ones. The synthetic ones, just like we have semi-synthetic and synthetic antibiotics, we also have that for fungi. Now, what is the synthetic antifungi drugs. These are synthesized drugs from existing fungi drugs as a result of modification of the chemical structure or addition of certain compounds to an existing metabolite that makes it to be more efficacious. I mean, make it to be more efficacy. I've increased the efficacy of the drugs, increase the potentiality of that drug because some natural metabolites, they can hold promising value against fungal infection, but their spectrum of activity may not be wide enough. So such metabolite holding promising um, qualities can be modified by adding compounds or restructuring the chemical compound or combining them with some active agent that cannot act alone to make them stronger. 
In these cases, we call them synthetic or semi-synthetic. Semi-synthetic are obtained from existing. The synthetic like is completely something that is made from chemicals, but then it mimics an existing agent. So from the antifungal antibiotics, we have the macrolide pollen, we have the amphotericin B and statin. For the synthetic, we have azoles, which is imidazole, ketoconazole, myconazole, triazole, myconazole, hydraconazole, and that. So we also have squalene epoxidase inhibitors, which is example, tebafenefine and naphtifine. These are antifungal drugs of synthetic origin. We also have classification of antifungal drugs according to route of administration. When we say route of administration, that is, how do we give this antifungal drug, how do we apply it to treat humans? Route of administration, is it oral drug? Is it a drug that you have to give it with an injection? Or is it a drug that we have to apply directly on the skin? Now, systemic antifungal drugs are given intravenously. Systemic antifungal drugs are drugs that are given when you have given somebody injection or they pass it through a drip. It can be introduced into a drip and the drip, that is the IV, intravenous solution, which is normally given to people while they are sleeping or while they are on admission. Hold on a second. Sorry for that, there was a disturbance. Now, topical antifungal, those are applied directly to the skin. Example of topical antifungal, those are the ones you can see in creams. They appear in a kind of tube. They have been applied directly on the skin. They are applied directly to the infection because you can see the infection, you can see the fungal infection. So you apply it directly on it and the person is relieved. Example are those on the below. This is different from systemic, which is given to you directly in form of injection or as an IV solution. Our major example today, we are looking at amphotericin B antibiotics. We want to look at this type of antifungal drug and give um, some information on it. Amphotericin B or A and A are antifungal drugs which are used for treatment. Amphotericin A is not popular, so it's not used clinically. When I say it's not popular, it means it's used is not encouraged, while B is the one that is used popularly. They are natural polyene macrolide. They have many bo double bonds. Remember, the last time we said this, a few minutes ago, that these things are produced from microorganisms. So they are natural polyene macrolide. And macrolides are usually characterized with a large lactone ring. Their bonds enables their activity against fungi. Pharmacokinetically, amphotericin B is poorly absorbed orally. It's not a drug that should be given orally. 
for you to swallow, it is more effective when it is given intravenously. That is intravenous infusion, which everybody knows as drip. Its activity is mostly against fungal infection that are caused at the gastrointestinal tract. The drug is highly bound to plasma membrane, so it makes it effective. But it has a poor crossing ability to the blood, blood brain barrier. So that means infection that is at the, across the blood brain barrier, such as meningitis or brain infection, we can use amphotericin B. It is easily metabolized in the liver. That is, it does not accumulate. So it is a very good drug that can easily be excreted. When a drug is metabolized in the liver, that means the drug can easily be excreted out of the body. It will not accumulate and cause toxic activity. So excreted slowly in urine over a period of several days. That is why sometimes if you are taking some of this drug or you are passing out urine, you smell the drug in your system. I don't know if I ever experienced such before. The half-life is about 15 days. Its mechanism of action is selective fungicidal drug. It's a selective fungicidal drug just like we have bactericida, we also have fungicidal drug. It destroys fungal cell membrane by binding to ergosterol. So it acts by altering the permeability of the cell membrane. When the cell membrane of the fungus is altered, it leads to leakage of internal uh, substances. The intracellular ions, the macromolecules, all the content of the cytoplasm is leaked out. The cell begins to shrink and eventually it leads to cell death. That makes it fungicidal. Fungistatic slows down the growth of the organism, but fungicidal kills the organism completely. In every drug, usually there is always a resistance or the other. So fun, fun, fungus or fungi can develop resistance to amphotericin B. And resistance often occur if the ergosterol binding is impaired by either decreasing the membrane concentration of the ergosterol or by modifying the sterile target molecule. Now, what does that mean? Decreasing the membrane concentration of ergosterol or by modifying the sterile target. These are molecular means of development of resistance. If a, if a target is modified, then it's, it is not recognized by the drug because the drug is supposed to bind directly. But in this case, if it's modified, there is no binding. When there's no binding, there's no complex. When there's no complex, there's no activity. That leads to resistance. Decreasing the membrane concentration of ergosterol also reduces the impact. So this leads to resistance. Adverse effect, immediate reaction, it could lead to toxicity, fever, muscle spasm. Every drug usually has adverse effect. The adverse effect impact may be greater than one or the other. So, Below uh, the adverse effect 
Although the adverse effect can be avoided by slowing down the infusion, remember this drug is given by infusion, not orally, not topically. So slow down the infusion or the daily dose are reduced if these um, symptoms are observed. And this is in cases, not every time. It may not lead to muscle spasm. It may not be lead to, leading to vomiting. It may not lead to hypertension. But in case this uh, effect are noticed, then the remedy is below. The clinical uses of amphotericin B is in, I have the broad spectrum of activity and the fungicidal action. It's a drug of choice for life-threatening mycotic infection. Mycotic infection means fungal infection. For induction regimen for serious fungi infection, also for chronic therapy of, or preventive therapy of relapse. When we have relapse, most fungal infection normally come in a relapsing way. Relapse means it comes back again, it comes again. So it's a way of preventing relapsing infection caused by fungus. Sometimes fungi, you know, they, they are dispersed by spores. So their spores may remain. And this spores germinate again and make the fungi to start all over again. So this drug prevents relapse. In cancer, in cancer patients, it is used with neutropenia who remain febrile on broad spectrum antibiotics. Whenever there is a broad spectrum antibiotics, there's usually an upsurge of fungal infection leading to some kind of unpleasant symptoms. So amphotericin B are often used in such cases. We've discussed about the route of administration, which is slow IVI for systemic fungal infection, intrathetica for fungal central nervous infection, topical drops or in or direct application for subconjugivida infection, injection, which is usually for the um, mycotic corneal, that's for eyes, when you have an infection of the eyes caused by fungus, ulcer or keratitis. Local injection into the joints or fungal arthritis. You can inject the particular part of the nail. It can be given directly. If it's for systemic infection, you can give IV, that is intravenous. If it is for CN, CNS, CNI, central nervous infection, they can give intrathetical. Then they can give topical direct application in, if somebody is having this mycotic corneal, is the eyes infection caused by fungi. And blood, bladder irrigation in candidura. Bladder irrigation means they can flush the bladder with a drug for those that are having uh, gastrointestinal caused by candida. Another drug is the statin. The statin is another macrolide, similar in structure and mechanism to aphotericin B. However, it is too toxic for systemic use. It is used only topically. It's available as cream, ointment, and other preparation. It is not significantly absorbed from skin, more cause of embryo or GIT. Nistatin is too toxic. It is only used topically. It's clinical use, used for preventing superficial candidiasis of the mouth, esophagus, intestinal tract, used for vaginal candidiasis, cannot be used in combination with antibacterial agents or corticosteroids. Azoles are a group of synthetic fungistatic agents with a broad spectrum of activity. Azoles, they have both antibacterial activity, both antiprotozoa, antiaminic, emetic, and antifunga. So azoles are not ordinary antifunga, they are drugs of choice for different types of infection. 
So you must have heard about them in the class of antibiotics that are classified into imidazole group and triazole groups. Imidazole, we have ketoconazole, we have myconazole, we have clotrimozazole. I believe you must have heard about the first and the third one. The only problem with that, they lack selectivity. This drug, they lack selectivity. They don't select. The one with drug, they couldn't differentiate. Some other drug have selective activity, but this drug lacks selective activity. Their problem include inhibiting human gonadal and steroid synthesis, leading to decrease in testosterone and cortisol production. It can affect the production in humans, especially men. So the use of these drugs has adverse side effects. They also inhibit human P450 hepatic enzyme. P450 hepatic enzyme represent cytochrome P450, P450, which stands for a superfamily of closely related protein that protect the individual against potentially harmful substances by modifying this substance, either by oxidation, hydroxylation, or deacylation, and so on. So they be this human P450 hepatic enzyme, which is not too good. Ketoconazole is well absorbed orally. It has a good bioavailability, which is decreased with antacid iodine blocker, protein pumps, inhibitor, and food. Cola drinks improve absorption in patients with a chlorhydra. Half-life increases with the, with the dose. And it is seven to eight hours. Ketoconazole is inactivated in the liver and excreted in the bile and it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. The mechanism of action, it inhibits the fungi cytochrome 450 enzymes, which is responsible for converting lanosterol to ergosterol, which is the main sterol in fungi cell membrane. Inhibition of the mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase leading to accumulation of peroxide that cause auto digestion of the fungus. The imidazole may also alter RNA or DNA metabolism. The clinical uses is used topically or systematically. You can use, use it on the skin directly or it can be applied orally for treatment. It is used for oral or vaginal candidiasis. Candida can cause oral thrush and it can also cause vaginal candidiasis. It is also used to treat infection caused by dermatophytes and systemic mycosis, and mucocutaneous candidiasis. The drugs are usually for fungal treatment. The adverse effect for this drug includes nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. We also have hepatotoxic. It inhibit human 450 enzymes. This is the side effect. It also inhibit adrenal and gonadal steroids, leading to menstrual irregularities for women. The menstruation can be irregular. Then it can even lead to loss of libido for women. Impotence for men. And it can lead to kinakomastia in males. These are some of these adverse effects for the drug.
Another one is glycophosphine, which has a narrow spectrum fungistatic. If you notice, these drugs are fungistatic. For, for the previous one we mentioned that are fungistatic, what makes them fungistatic is that they act on the P450 enzymes, which makes them to reduce fungal activity. They are given orally, but the absorption increases with fatty meals. The half-life is 24 hours. Glycophosphine must be taken with the fatty meals so that it can have good absorption. The taken selectively by newly formed skin or concentrated in the skin. It induces cytochrome P450 enzymes. And usually it is given for two to six weeks for skin and air infection to allow replacement of infected keratin by the resistant structure. It doesn't have to be more than that because of some other adverse effect. In the life of the fungi, it inhibits the fungal mitosis by interfering the with the microtubule in function. Usually, glycophosphine is used in treating dermatophyte infection, like ringworm, hair infection, nail infection, and also used for treating athletic foods. The adverse effects include all what you see below, peripheral neuritis, mental confusion. It can lead to fatigue. It can lead to GIT upsets, vertigo, blurry vision, and all that. Though, one thing I omitted, it may not be too effective topically. Uh, this is not a drug that is can be depended upon because it's fungi, fungi static, unlike drugs that are fungicidal. So antifungal drug used for topical fungal infections. We have the topical azo derivative, nystatin and amphotericin, tabinafine, tolanaptate, naptifine, and glisofovine. These are drugs that are used for topical fungal infection. We see amphotericin among, even though it is used for systemic, but in some cases, it is also used for the topical infection. Topical fungal infection are used in superficial fungal infection, like I've said earlier, for dermatophytosis, ringworm, candidiasis, and fungal keratitis. They are not effective in mycosis of the nails or air or subcutaneous mycosis. The preferred formulation of cutaneous, the preferred formulation for cutaneous application is cream or solution. Usually topical antifungal agents are given in cream in tubes or they are given in solution so that it can be applied directly on the skin while those that are for systemic or deep-seated infection are given with IV and that. So for antifungal drugs, 
what are the lessons for us to take home? They are given because of fungal infection, and they are also given because of broad spectrum of activity of uh, antibodies that gives way for infections invading the system. In that cases, we need fungal drugs to take care of fungal infection, just like we need antiviral drugs to take care of antiviral infections. So types of fungal drugs given, those that are given topically and those that are given, I mean, those that are given topically and those that are given in topical way. And we have different types of fungal infection. We have the bactericide, I mean, fungicida and the fungistatic. In our next class, we will be looking at other topics based on the syllabus. So I'll organize another class that will allow us to have question and answer. This class, we have a continuation. The continuation of the class will be sent to everyone. And um, if you have any questions, you can send across to me. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.